Hello, everyone, and welcome to our presentation on RNA interference and Inclisiran's mechanism of action. Inclisiran represents a groundbreaking advancement in the treatment of hypercholesterolemia. It's an innovative injectable therapy that's part of the broader, exciting world of RNA therapeutics. These therapeutics are among the most significant discoveries in science and medicine, poised to revolutionize medical therapy in the coming decade. Using RNA interference, we can selectively silence any gene, leveraging this ability for therapeutic purposes and potentially reducing the need for daily medication. In this presentation, we'll explore the RNA interference pathway and its application in common medical conditions, such as hypercholesterolemia, hypertension, elevated lipoprotein A levels, and amyloidosis. Let's get started. The production of PCSK9, just like any other protein, starts in the cell nucleus. This is where instructions are sent out using messenger RNA to the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, PCSK9 is synthesized and then released into the bloodstream. The majority of PCSK9 is produced in the liver. In our previous video, we talked about the PCSK9 molecule. Basically, PCSK9 binds to LDL receptors and stops them from being recycled once inside the cell. This means fewer LDL receptors on the cell surface, resulting in higher cholesterol levels in the bloodstream. Evidence is clear that if we inhibit PCSK9, we can lower LDL cholesterol levels significantly. The inhibition of PCSK9 can be achieved in a couple of ways. The first method is interfering with the function of PCSK9 by using monoclonal antibodies like avolacumab and alirocumab. These drugs essentially render PCSK9 inefficient. They do this by binding to PCSK9, so it can't connect to the LDL receptor anymore. With PCSK9 out of the way, the LDL receptor is free to handle LDL particles as it's supposed to, and then it can return to the cell surface to clear more LDL particles. The second method to inhibit PCSK9 is by interfering with its production in the liver cells. As of now, the only medication in this category is Inclisiran, commercially known as Lecvio, which is the focus of this talk. To fully grasp how Inclisiran works, it's essential to first understand RNA interference, a sophisticated gene silencing process within our cells. By understanding the mechanism of action of RNA interference machinery, not only will we comprehend Inclisiran's role in lowering cholesterol, but we will also learn about a new exciting frontier in medical science. This pathway is currently being used to develop medications for treating various diseases, such as hypertension, amyloidosis, and high lipoprotein A, among others. As we mentioned earlier, the process of protein synthesis starts from the nucleus. In the simplest form, DNA sends out a small piece of code via messenger RNA to the cytoplasm, which is then translated into the intended protein. So, it's going from DNA to messenger RNA and finally to the desired protein. Now, there are times when our cells don't need a certain protein and the production needs to be suppressed. This is where the concept of gene silencing comes into play. Instead of directly messing with the DNA, which could harm it for generations, our body takes a smarter approach. It targets the messenger in this process by using the RNA interference system. For RNA interference to do its job, it needs a specific kind of molecule, like a guide, to get started and to know exactly which messenger RNA to hunt down and eliminate. This guide is a complementary template of the messenger RNA that we intend to silence, but in a double-stranded form known as double-strand RNA. So, double-strand RNA is the start button that kicks the RNA interference machinery into action to eliminate the unwanted protein through silencing its gene by targeting the messenger RNA. Let's look at an example use of the RNA interference system in viral defense in plants and invertebrates. When viruses invade cells, 
they insert their genetic material into the cells. In doing that, they hijack the cell's machinery to replicate more viruses. During this process, certain viral activities can lead to the production of double-strand RNAs. The cell recognizes these double-strand RNAs and activates the RNA interference machinery. RNA interference uses the double-strand RNA as a blueprint, hunting the viral RNA to eliminate them, stopping further virus production. So with the double-strand RNA guide, the RNA interference machine targets and neutralizes the intruding viruses. While human cells do have RNA interference machinery, its role in antiviral defense is less clear. Research suggests that RNA interference may play a role in controlling some viral infections, but this is not the primary mechanism of defense against viruses in humans. The discovery of RNA interference pathway is a fascinating story that begins with petunias, these vibrant flowers. Back in the 1980s, a group of scientists had this idea. They wanted to make the purple color of petunias even more striking. They knew the specific gene responsible for the purple color, which, through its messenger RNA, created the purple pigments. Their plan seemed simple. Add extra copies of this gene, flower produces more purple pigment, and you'll get a richer color. However, contrary to their expectations, this did not deepen the purple color. Instead, it led to some flowers losing their color entirely and turning white. What they accidentally discovered was that the added gene was actually silencing the original color gene. This was our first glimpse into the world of gene inhibition and silencing. This unexpected result puzzled the scientists, as it went against the prevailing understanding of gene expression at the time. But it started extensive research in the field, which by late 1990s, led to a breakthrough understanding of RNA interference. In the late 1990s, scientists Andrew Fire and Craig Mello were engaged in research on a small nematode known as C. elegans, focusing particularly on a protein called UNC22. They knew from prior studies that mutations causing low levels or a deficiency of the UNC22 protein led to a distinctive twitching movement in these worms. Armed with this knowledge, Fire and Mello hypothesized that if they could somehow interfere with the expression of the UNC22 gene, they might be able to induce this twitching movement artificially. During their groundbreaking research, Fire and Mello created a synthetic RNA that mirrored the sequence of the UNC22 messenger RNA. Their initial trials using single-stranded RNA, including sense and antisense strands, didn't yield the expected results. The game-changing moment came with the introduction of double-strand RNA, which combined sense and antisense strands. This introduction successfully induced the anticipated twitching phenotype in the nematodes, and notably in their offspring. This observation signified a potent, heritable gene silencing effect, achievable with small amounts of double-strand RNA. This pivotal experiment, which later garnered them the Nobel Prize in 2006, revealed the workings of the RNA interference machinery. In essence, they demonstrated how a gene could be effectively silenced robustly and specifically, without altering the DNA itself. The realization that double-strand RNA can activate the RNA interference system marked a significant breakthrough. In human cells, double-strand RNA is naturally present, but only in minimal quantities. Most RNA within our cells, such as messenger RNA, is single-stranded. This scarcity of double-strand RNA presents a unique opportunity. By intentionally introducing double-strand RNA, we can engage the RNA interference machinery for specific purposes. In this process, the sensed strand of the double-strand RNA is an exact mirror of the target messenger RNA sequence, while the antisense strand serves as its complementary match. Together, they form a double-strand RNA molecule capable of effectively initiating the RNA interference process. This allows for precise targeting and silencing of specific genes, providing a powerful tool for gene regulation and therapeutic applications. 
Now, equipped with this knowledge, our task is straightforward. Identify the specific protein we wish to target for elimination. First, we determine the genetic sequence of its messenger RNA. Then in the lab, we synthesize a matching double-strand RNA and introduce it into the target organ. Upon introduction, the RNA interference machinery springs into action, recognizing and destroying the messenger RNA that aligns with the sensed strand of our introduced double-strand RNA. This action effectively halts the production of the targeted protein, achieving what we call gene silencing. You can think of it as giving a detective a proper photo of a suspect that they need to track down and put away. In our case, the double-strand RNA is the photo. The RNA interference machinery plays the role of the detective, and the messenger RNA is the person of interest. Returning to Inclizarin and its mechanism of action. Here, the unwanted protein is PCSK9, which we want to eliminate. The first step involves identifying and mapping the genetic code of its messenger RNA. With this information in hand, we synthesize a matching double-strand RNA in the lab called Inclizarin. When introduced into the liver cells, Inclizarin activates the RNA interference machinery to search for the messenger RNA that encodes PCSK9. Once found, it efficiently destroys it, stopping the production of this protein. This increases the number of LDL receptors, leading to lower LDL cholesterol levels in the bloodstream. Another area where RNA interference is proving to be valuable is in the treatment of hypertension, with a major study currently in progress. The focus here is on angiotensinogen, a key precursor of angiotensin, which has been a key player in hypertension management. By identifying and mapping the messenger RNA of angiotensinogen, researchers have developed zelobezoran, a tailored double-strand RNA, matching the messenger RNA sequence of angiotensinogen. This medication activates the RNA interference machinery to target and destroy angiotensinogen messenger RNA, which leads to a reduction in angiotensinogen production. One of the major benefits of this treatment is its method of administration, a six-monthly injection, providing a promising alternative to the daily regimen of hypertension tablets. However, it's crucial to remember that this therapy is still in trial and is not yet ready for general clinical use. The RNA interference pathway is also proven effective in the treatment of amyloidosis. In this condition, there is an abnormal and excess production of a protein called transthyretin, or TTR, which makes it a great target for elimination via RNA interference pathway. We map the TTR messenger RNA and synthesize a matching double-strand RNA called ptizarin. Ptizarin activates the RNA interference to find and destroy TTR messenger RNA, effectively halting the production of this protein. Ptizarin has been approved for the treatment of polyneuropathy in adults with hereditary TTR amyloidosis, and active research continues into its efficacy in cardiac amyloidosis. And lastly, new exciting drugs are in development to reduce lipoprotein A levels. Lipoprotein A is an LDL-like particle with an added protein, ApoA. We know that high lipoprotein A levels increase cardiovascular risk significantly. Unlike LDL cholesterol, lipoprotein A is assembled in the liver and then released into the bloodstream. A key component in this assembly is the ApoA protein. Without this protein, there would be no lipoprotein A, which makes ApoA a good target for elimination via RNA interference pathway. Scientists have mapped its ApoA messenger RNA and developed a double-strand RNA medication called Olpazaran. This drug uses RNA interference to target and destroy the ApoA messenger RNA, which effectively stops the production of ApoA and subsequently lipoprotein A. Currently, there's a large phase 3 trial underway to evaluate the clinical efficacy of this medication. Just an interesting note before we wrap up our discussion. Any medication ending with the suffix saran 
operates through the RNA interference pathway. S and I stands for small interfering, and RAN is a rearrangement or anagram of RNA, together indicating small interfering RNA. As we've seen, the discovery of the RNA interference pathway has significantly broadened the horizon for developing new treatments across various medical fields. However, RNA interference pathway isn't the only method to target messenger RNA in the cell. Another interesting approach involves antisense oligonucleotides. These are short DNA strands designed to bind directly to messenger RNA, either blocking its translation into protein or triggering its degradation. I'll briefly discuss ASOs and their unique mechanism of action in another video. And that brings us to the end of our presentation. If you found this information helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe so you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded. Thank you for watching.